right? Yes. You woke up with breath in your lungs?
to the Lord and make up the praise. Look at all of us, you just come on and lift up your hands and acknowledge Him. You alone can praise Him for what He's done for you. I can't do it. The praise team can't do it. Nobody can do it but you. We have to handle business. <laughs> But I'm not going to take long with it. Can I, CJ and Josh, can you help me up here and help me for a second? Brother Marcus, can we pull up this next screen? We're going to take up our offer. There are three ways to give to New Life. You can give in-house, you can give online, or you can give on Tidely. The next screen has a QR code that takes you to the app. We are in our building fund project. If you want to donate to that, put it in the building fund. But we are going to move on with worship, Brother Ernest. We pray over this offering as we take it over.
You may be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning. I, I, I need to I need to explain. Oh, sorry. Let me dismiss our kids. The kids' church. Are right, we call them our sprouts? There's something I need you to understand. In, in the spiritual realm, Jesus prays. Jesus anticipates. Jesus sympathizes. So Jesus has, and, and the Holy Spirit has the same emotions that we do. And I've talked, uh, you know, I've, I've talked about Bishop Barry King. Well, he's coming next week. I need you to understand, though, and this is something, you know, we notice, is that in churches there are seasons where you can tell that the Holy Spirit is anticipating something big. And church, I need you to understand that anticipation has been growing over the past couple weeks for what's coming to New Life Church of God. I need you to understand that next week God is about to do something because we're bringing the altar back in. You need to realize that this So I need you to understand that anticipation is not only building in us as we get excited for the service, but I need you to understand that anticipation is building in the spirit realm as well. And I need you to understand that this tells us God's not through. God's not done. God says, I've seen you. God says, I see you laboring. And God says, we're going to see a harvest. So it's a building with anticipation. I encourage you, be here next week for our altar consecration service. And I'm telling you, make it back that night. Because what I've learned, and, and Bishop Barrett Bar can attest to this, when you have a service where the anticipation hits and overflows, it follows for a little bit. That's right. So we're going to turn around that night and we're going to have some more church. Yeah. We will not be having service tonight. We, uh, we are, we, we're going to be here a little later after service, so we're not going to have youth or adults, go home, spend time with your family, and be ready for next week. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're having breakfast next week. Don't worry, you don't have to get here any earlier. It's at 9.30, and you'll be falling back getting that extra hour of sleep. Isn't God good? Woo. So be here. If you're, whatever you're going to bring, if you'll see Sister Sarah, she'll, make, she'll let you know what we got and what's going on. Is that good with you, Sister Sarah? Yeah. I can always ask her anything. She's like, yes, Pastor, I got it. And I <laughs> God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to turn it over to uh, to Bishop Greg Baird, who's our state ministries director. I met Bishop Baird probably when I was about 18 or 19, uh, maybe in my 20s, but I went to camp and I knew who he was because everyone made a big deal about him and all he knew me was the guy who wore cool hats. And I was honored that even Bishop Baird recognized that I had cool hats. It was a huge honor and I'm excited to have him here. This morning with us, I'm going to turn it over to Bishop Barry. Can we give the Lord one more praise in this house? Let's just feel the head in the house of the Lord today. And yes, uh, you were the guy that had the cool hats. But I wish I had the cool hair that you had. So, uh, but what an honor to be here and be back at uh, New Life here in Rome. It's been a, been a season. In fact, last time I was here, CJ wasn't married, no kids, he wasn't giving bottles to anybody. And I was at the, the Warren's wedding. How long have you guys been married now? Well, three years. Three years. Yeah, that was a man, that was a wedding. It was more like a church service. <laughs> church service than a and a wedding. It was a celebration, but uh, three going on, on three years. Well, happy anniversary. And you'd be the first to wish a happy anniversary. <laughs> three years. And then to see some of you, uh, some folks I've known in my visits here in the past. And so what an honor to be here today on this special occasion. Anytime that we can take uh, uh, time to honor the shepherd. Oh yeah, you've got a shepherd. Amen. We must do that. It's a Jesus thing to do because he's uh, a good shepherd. He's the yeah. great shepherd. Yeah, the lead shepherd. Amen. And what a model that, uh, that he is. And uh, what a model of ministry that this this church is. We're all connected. I'm getting acquainted with the, the Hales, all the Sister Hale. I've met her before, but it's a generational thing that's happening here. There's four generations sitting on that one pew right there. One, two, and right here is three and four. Four generations, Brother Hale. This is exciting. And so uh, all these dots are connected by the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. 
man, what a kingdom that we are a part of. Yeah, now we have to operate in a democracy. Oh boy, that's something. But it's good to be a part of a, of a kingdom, a family that's connected Amen. by this common bond, the bond of the blood of Jesus. And so uh, we're family today. And uh, families, they uh, worship together. Amen. They pray together. Amen. And they eat together. So uh, I saw what was going on back there. So uh, I won't, uh, I won't tell you. We're going to get right into the meat of the word, Bye. and then we're going to go back there, and we're going to enjoy some fellowship. Because uh, there's partnership and there's fellowship too. So we've had some worship, a lot of ships, a lot of connectivity here this day. But uh, just honored to be a part of this service today. And I came bearing gifts, and I have something for this. This precious family, this young family, and uh, they're growing, and uh, man, it's uh, it's exciting to see that they're uh, multiplying and replenishing the earth, as Scripture said. <laughs> so with little Asher and little Sophie, and uh, they grow up fast, and so uh, just a joy to be here today. Uh, I'm going to direct your attention. I've been on this study several times, and matter of fact, as of late, and have some. Some things that I've uh, built around this, this message for, for pastors and more importantly for us, uh, the, sh the sheep. <laughs> We're sheep. Amen. We're the sheep. We must have a shepherd. Right. I wouldn't be standing here today in front of this uh, sacred desk without, um, without a shepherd in my life. There's right. been multiple yep. shepherds in my life. Okay. There's been times when I've been a good sheep. And then there's times that I've been a black sheep. There's been times when I've been in the fold and in the middle of things. And then there's been times when I've wandered. But it was a shepherd that always, with the rod and his staff, brought me back into the fold. What a model. We all have a good shepherd. He has a rod and a staff. And he brings us into the fold. Matter of fact, he is the shepherd that laid down his life for the sheep yes. that died for us. So what a model. We all must have shepherds. And if you're here today, you've got a shepherd. And you've got a, a good shepherd. And this couple, I'm telling you, Tim, Tim and Allison are great are great uh, shepherds. They love people. They're people persons. And uh, they love sheep. They love the, the sheep that are in the fold. And they love the sheep that are on their way to this fold. And it is exciting. But the, uh, the stall gets a little messy. Mm. And the altars are coming back to the house of the Lord. You're right, Pastor, Shepherd. But remember, man, when those altars are present, it's, it, it's bloody. It's messy. Oh, yeah. But there is a blood that flows Money. from Calvary's Money. brow. And it Amen. still flows today. Yes, it does. pours over. The, so there has to be some sacrifice. That's where we come in. So welcome to the fold, and you're in good company today. So sheep, let's buckle up, and we're going to become good sheep for this shepherd. Is that all right? Yeah. Thank you for this day. Thank you for being back with brothers and sisters. Thank you for you being a model of a good shepherd, a great shepherd. You lead us. You guide us through your word, through your Holy Spirit that is here this day. And giving us a model from Old Testament days until now. Yes. This model of shepherding. Thank you for this shepherd. These shepherds that you've sent to this church. That have stood behind this pulpit over the years. And in like manner, dear Lord, you've sent another shepherd. And they are a couple, a young family. They are your children. You called them, dear Lord. They didn't choose this. You chose them. And then you sent them to us. So today, dear Lord, I pray that you would speak through your word one more time. And I pray that you would use me, dear Lord, one more time as one that has been led by multiple shepherds over my life. Speak your word today, dear Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. 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 The shepherding concept is, it's, it's not a new model. It is a model, and it's recorded all through Scripture, and it starts back in Jeremiah. And I'm reading from Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. The Bible says this, And I will give 
you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. First thing that jumps off the page to me is it is a gift. The shepherd is a gift. Now I came bearing gifts today and we're going to give gifts to the pastor. That's the day that we're going to celebrate them being a good shepherd, them being great shepherds. But the Lord has given us the shepherds. He's given the gift to us. They're called. They didn't choose this. They didn't choose us. They were called. And it comes, the Bible said, according to his heart. Wow. That's pretty, that's, that's a pretty vital organ, folks. When God is giving us shepherds from his heart, we had better take note. Who will feed us with knowledge and understanding. And then in Jeremiah 23, verse 4, it says this. I promise to choose leaders who will care for them like real shepherds. All of my people will be there and they will never again be frightened. We need shepherds that will lead us through these, well, frankly, these are fearful times. There is fear and men's hearts are failing them for fear after looking after all of these things that are coming on this planet. Folks, we are unraveling. Right before our very eyes, the world is unraveling. It is a sign that Jesus the good shepherd is coming soon. We better be fed with truth and knowledge. We better stay close to the heart of God, to the shepherd who comes from the heart of God to lead us through these troubled times. Can I get a witness? Oh, yes. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 2 said it this way. Preach the word. Wow. That get me. So preach the pastor. Preach the word. Whether we hear or whether we don't hear, preach the word. That's the task. That's uh, why the Lord has chosen you and gifted you to preach truth. And this world needs truth today. Oh, absolutely. So preach the truth. And the Bible says this, to be prepared in season and out of season. What a season we're in right now. We must have truth. Everything is convoluted nowadays. Confusion is running rampant. We don't know whether we're male or female any longer. We must have truth. Preach the truth, especially in the dark days that we live right now, according to the word. You got to correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and understanding. You read that one more time. I didn't say that. This is a weeping prophet prophet who knows something about shepherding said this, to correct, to rebuke, and encourage. I wish those first two words weren't in there, to re- correct and rebuke. I don't know if you're like me, but I've been corrected and rebuked uh, over the years. It started from my little Harlan County, Kentucky mom, who was a coal miner's daughter, Sister Hale. She was about that tall. She learned uh, correction and rebuking the old-fashioned way. (laughs) Whatever was in her hand. I got whipped with a G.I. Joe one time. (laughs) I got whipped with a Frisbee. (laughs) Belts, big ones, little ones, thin ones. Switches, you got to know what a switch is. I got whipped with switches. I got, what the hell, I got whipped one time with a brand new Nike gym (laughs) shoe. She didn't even have to get up off the couch and it come flying across the room and that landed right where she was aiming. Oh yeah, that correction and that rebuking, it's tough, but it's there. But there's also encouragement. Encourage. So correct. Preach the truth and correct. Preach the truth and rebuke. Preach the truth and encourage. Oh, we got to have encouragement. Discouragement is just running rampant in hopelessness. Preach the word, and it's the word that will lift us up. It's the word that will lift us out. It's the word that will encourage us, and thus use those words and speak those words to encourage one another. The scripture encourages us to do. So the shepherd will feed us and lead us are the two simple things that I want to reiterate according to the word of the Lord today. Feed us and lead us so that we can be fed and led. I have to be fed. 
and I have to be led. So it takes the work of a shepherd to feed us and lead us. Yeah. Leading us. Not to drive us. Oh no. Man, we're driven crazy. Yeah. We need to be led. Yes. Folks, let's line in behind the man of God as he follows Christ. Yes. Yeah. That's my plan. The Apostle Paul stated that. Not to drive us, but to lead us. Where are you going to lead us to green pastures? Man, there's so much... Dry, parched land nowadays. Yes. Dry, parched preaching. Amen. We need some green pastures to graze Amen. in. Amen. Green right. pastures that will bring nourishment and encouragement to us. Lead us, pastor, to yes. the green pastures. Yes. Lead us to the pasture that, that has that, that little creek, that, uh, that water flowing through it where a, a thirsty man, and I was thirsty when I got saved, I was drier than a sweeper bag. <laughs> I was parched. The inside, I was like that song, running on empty. There was nothing happening on the inside. Run, found out one day that the, the road I thought I jumped on to, to run away from turned into the road I was on. And I thought I was running from this and then it became a head up. Dry and thirsty and miserable and vile. But it was a preacher that preached the truth. It was a pastor that led me to some green pastures and some calm waters. Man, I want, I want to lay in some calm waters. Storm after storm, especially the last three years. Man, the pandemic, storm after storm. And someone said, well, well we're all in the, the same boat. Man, no, we're all in the same storm. But there's different sized boats. Some were on battleships, and some were in little dinghy boats, and some were on cruise ships. But the storm were raging one right after the other. What about some calm waters? Yeah. Some calm waters. Has to lead us to some calm waters through the word of the Lord. One of my favorite uh, stories in the Bible is recorded in Mark. I like Mark. He, Obviously, he had attention deficit. He got right to the issue. Man. He didn't leave it long, but he tells the story that Jesus was on a ship. He's tired. He'd been ministering to people. He crawls under that ship to the hinder parts, lays his head down, you know, some say like on a rock, something hard, and goes to sleep. But out on the deck, the disciples' fear set in because there was a fierce storm. I mean, it was a tempest, the Bible said. The waters are coming over the edge of the, of the boat. And the disciples who had been hanging out with Jesus, the son of the living God, they had seen miracle after miracle. Man, what a pretty good place to be. You would think they would be all right with Jesus on board. Oh, no. Fear had set in because of this fierce storm. Mm -hmm. And I can just see that. And I've got a vivid imagination. I started <laughs> off in children's ministry and then got into youth ministry and then zigzag between the two for the last umpteen years now that's led into four decades and so it's all I know but in my mind's eye I can see this I can see that ship and there was other ships out there and this storm it was fierce and these winds are blowing and man the, the waves are coming over the ship and I can see those disciples like hey Jesus hey Jesus you might want to wake up I know you're sleeping and rent, but we're about to go under. Hey, we're, you ever felt like that where you're about to go under? Yes. Man, you couldn't tread water any longer. Yeah. Everything was upside down, inside out, and you were just holding on. Yeah. Listen, hey, Jesus, come on out of here. We're about to perish. And I, you said you loved us and we're going to be careful. <laughs> we need a shepherd. Come on out of here. I can see Jesus crawl out from the hinder parts of that ship and assess the situation. Look around. I can, I can just say, ooh, look at that wave. Ooh, that was a doozy. Oh, look at that one right there. Boy, it sure is wet here on the deck. Man, where's the mops at? Feel that wind, and I can see him stretch. You know, after, nothing feels better than a good stretch after a nap. I can see him stretch, and the Bible said this. Then he looked out across that waters and saw that storm, and all he said was, Peace, Peace be, be still. still. Amen. 
Three words. Three words. And the winds stop blowing. And the waves, man, they quit billowing. From three words, peace be still. But often we don't read on. We like that part. Oh, there's songs about that part. <laughs> we love that. The Bible said this, and a calm came over them. Man, I need a calm to come over me today. We need a calm to come over us. Israel needs a calm to come over them today. People in the hospitals, they need a calmness in their life. I've got good news today. We know the peace speaker. He's on board our ship. Whatever size our ship, whatever storm is blowing in your life, Jesus is on board. He is a shepherd that speaks into our lives, and a calm is going to come over you. Wow. That's the work of a shepherd. In my life to lead me and to uh, to just uh, lead a guide to where I was supposed to be. Well, I heard one pastor say it this way, Pastor Tim. A pastor, he knows the way, shows the way, and goes the way. Show us the way, brother. Go the way. But here's the load that is on the pastor and his wife and their children. It's a load. It's a heavy load. Because it wasn't something that they chose. It was something they were called into. Yes. And then when they were yoked together, they're in this together. We're in this together. We are a fold and we must be together. The New Testament church was a fold. And all the other folds were a part of this one fold known as the New Testament church. And everything they did, they did together. We've got to get together. Too much divisions. Oh, this church has two aisles. Some churches have one aisle. We hear a lot about aisles nowadays. Oh, we've got the uh, you know the, the right wingers on one side of the aisle and the left wingers on. Oh, it's like that one preacher said, man, it doesn't matter what side of the aisle, what side of the bird, they're still flapping from one bird. Boy, the bird and the wings are in trouble nowadays. Too much division. We've got to be led, Pastor. Show us the way. But the load, they're the first ones in and the last ones out. That's a heavy load. They go in the water first. Now, that was in the Old Testament. Sometimes those waters parted. Show us the rocks. <laughs> Show us the rock. Show us the rocks. Lead the way. First one in, but the last one out. They want us to be safe. They're going to lead us. So thank you. Thank you for heeding to the call. Thank you. Yeah. Well, been in this a while, and like I said, I've, I've been a little bit of both sheep and goats, but I want to teach you something today. I want to show you something today. I came across this, this interesting, uh, it was actually, it was a documentary that I was watching, man. I got bored one time. I was watching this uh this history channel or one of these documentary things came on and it talked about the leader sheep. It was interesting to me. I mean, it, the guy's voice just about put me to sleep, but some things he was saying, man, it was it was powerful. Found something out. You know, there's a you know, the sheep and the goats are kind of from the same family, but uh, there's sheep and there's goats. We know that. Every church has sheep and a few goats. It's just the way it is. Well, I noticed something about the difference between a sheep and a, and a goat. You see, sheep, their tails are tucked down. All right, tails are tucked down. But a goat, their tails are up. <laughs> now, once again, uh, you know, Alice of my children's ministry kicks in. I can see, I can see, <laughs> I can see those goats. Every church got those goats, man. They just come in like this. You can identify them. They're goats. And their tails are up. Well, sheep, when they graze those green pastures that the shepherd leads them to, they graze looking down. Man, they're just, they're getting the green grass. They're eating. They're grazing. They're being fed. There's nutrition. And they're looking down. But goats, and they're looking up. Oh, yeah. Tails are up. They look up. Their noses are up. They climb up. 
They graze looking up. They graze on leaves. They're too good to graze on the grass. The green, oh no, they want leaves. Oh yeah, they want this. They want fruit. That's the difference in sheep and goats. Sheep, uh, they're led to green pastures, but goats, man, they're climbers. They're moving up, climbing up. Matter of fact, there ought to be a business saying something like goats on the roof or something like that. that that'd be original, wouldn't it? They're climbers. They're always moving up. Sheep are docile. Sheep are unified. Let me say that one more time. Sheep are unified. The New Testament church was unified. When they got together, they were unified. When they got together, they prayed together. That unified them. They had a singleness of pur purpose. They were together. Matter of fact, the original language in Greek says they were together, together. But what happened when they got together, together, praying together, fellowshiping together, worshiping together? There was a gift given to them. It was the power of the Holy Spirit. When 120 of them gathered together in an upper room, God poured out the power of the Holy Ghost on them. And some strange and bizarre things happened. And from that point on, it changed world history. And here we are today in this fold with a good shepherd who is led by a great shepherd. And so he is going to lead us and continue to lead us to green pastures and open up the altars once again. Yeah, it'll be bloody, but I'm telling you it'll be something that we need and be ready. Wow. It's going to be a calm water. No more fears. It's going to be encouraging. There's going to be an atmosphere change. And yes, it's something to be anticipating and excited about. Yes. It comes from leadership. So they're unified. They flock together. But goats, you notice goats, they have horns. Goats like to butt heads. Goats like to uh, lock horns. You understand all of this language? Oh yeah, the goat. Well, thanks be unto God, we have sheep here today. Amen. We, and we have, a, we have room for a few more sheep. Amen. And they're out there. They got outside the fold. But they are on their way home. Yes. Why? Because we have a shepherd that's going to go after them. Amen. Oh, he may lead, lead us here, leave us here for a little bit in this green pasture, but he has to go after the lost sheep. Yes. He has to go out the, for the black sheep. Yes. He has to go out for the one that got outside the fold yes. and bring them back in. Amen. That's how you and I got here in the first place. It was a pastor that carried us back home to the fold. Same principle today. Well, here's what I found out in that uh, interesting documentary that I listened to. There's a unique breed of sheep, and they're called the Icelandic leader sheep. Leader sheep. Have you heard the word leadership? Well, that was kind of a derivative from that. There's leadership. But there are leader sheep. Leader sheep. And it's a special breed, a unique uh, breed that has these, these traits and these gifts that are helpful to the shepherd as he shepherds the flock. And here's what I discovered. Man, I started taking notes and it was it was late when I was one of those sleepless nights, man. And, and it just got my attention. I got these notes and then since I keep studying this and looking at it over and over again, they are natural leaders. Leader sheep. Natural leaders. They take the point. They're decisive and wise. Boy, that's a trait we can use in the church nowadays. Amen. To make decisions that are wise decisions. Yes. Where has wisdom gone nowadays? Yes. They're wise. They control the pace of the flock. The shepherd's timid. The shepherd's leading. But the leader sheep, they're kind of the next. They're the understudy. They are in submission. They are under the mission of the shepherd. Yes. Do you get this? They are. It's a, he's on a mission. Our pastor is on a mission that he has been called to do. We are in submission. Are you catching this today? Yes. Yes. And it jumped off the screen to me. There's a picture of those Iceland. Yeah, they got horns, but theirs are curled under. Oh yeah, and they're man, they're they're clad. They got some some nice uh, wool on there, but they're moving. Oh, yeah, they're leaders. They take the lead of the flock. 
Wait, they have a unique sixth sense about them. They can predict storms. They're in the first storm track. Oh, yeah. This is a beautiful day today, according to the storm trackers. And then when weather is pending, bad weather is pending, they stay with the flock. Wow. Folks, there's been a lot of storms lately, and a lot of sheep have scattered. Amen. Leader sheep don't scatter. Amen. They lead under the submission of the shepherd. They stay with the flock until the storm is over. They stay in the barn and by the door, and then uh, they lead. Here's what happened. Then they lead the flock back outside. The barn door opens. Shepherd opens that. Leader sheep, they go out first. I can just see this in my mind again, Alice, and I'm going to keep pointing at you. It's just, it's just what I'm going to do. And I can see them. They're looking this way. They're looking that way. Yep, the weather, the storm. All right. Come on, sheep. Here we go. The shepherd's out there. And they lead the sheep outside of the stall. Back to the green pastures. Back to the calm waters. Oh, yeah. That's a model. That's a model that we can pick up on. So the sixth sense, in essence, that's the, the atmosphere of the Holy Ghost. That's the leading of the Holy Spirit. Leader sheep, keep leading. Storm after storm, you've got to go first if you're a leader sheep. Lead the flock in the direction and line up and follow the shepherd as he leads us. It's another interesting thing is that when they go outside and they look around, you know what else they're looking for? Predators. Yeah. They're out there looking for uh, coyotes. They're looking for wolves. They're looking for fox. They're looking for birds that, that prey on, on our little ones. Oh, yeah, and they're out there, folks. Yes. They're out there. They look out there first and make sure the coast is clear, and then they lead the flock into the stall and then into the pasture and getting close to the shepherd. We've got to be close to our shepherds. Yep. Our shepherds. Because that's the mom. And then they, they're the first ones to lead the way. They beat out new paths that the shepherd is going and leading to. That's interesting. These paths, they have to go through some forests. They have to go through some meadows to get to that green pasture. That's his job. They're going to lead us and feed us. But the leader sheep, they have to help them. Found it out. They have to help. They got to follow along. Before you know it, there is a path that the sheep will follow. There is a way which seems right unto a man, Amen. but it's a crooked path. Yes. It's up and it's down and it's in and out. Right now, it's frankly going down. But there is a path that leads on the one that is higher than us. And that direction is this way. And it is straight. It is a straight way. And it is, leads us to a gate. Oh, yes. we got to go in that way. So help the shepherd beat out the new paths so that when those sheep, the lost sheep, come into here, they'll get right on the path that's already been carved out. And, oh, we've got a legacy of that in this church. Amen. A legacy of that in this movement. Yes. Four generations here this morning, there had to be some new paths that had to beat out. Well, in this world, they'll tell you there's all kinds of paths to him. All, there's a litany of shows on every day telling you there's the path to God. There's one way. Right. One way unto righteousness. There is one path that is right. His name is Jesus. And oh, what a shepherd he is. These leaders, sheep, they build and store up fat from the food that they eat for their inside. They're more consumed with the inside than their outside. Amen. Storing up the food and, and storing it up because they know that there's going to be another storm. They know that there's going to be some more troubled waters. They know that there's going to be another dark forest that they have to ford through, that they've got to go through. Oh, yeah. So they store it up for meager times. Man, I'm telling you, none of us would be here today if we didn't have something on the inside. Right. You know who that something is? It's Jesus yeah. through His Word, 
through his spoken word, through his written word, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. So pastor, keep preaching truth. Yes. We're going to keep storing that food up because we know there will be a dark day ahead and it's only what we have on the inside that will sustain us carrying this outside. Amen? Amen. It's a model, folks. Well, the other interesting thing. And because they're leaders, sometimes these leadership are difficult to manage. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because of their individuality or their independent nature or personality. Pastor, Scripture says you have to be patient with us. And that uh, we're individuals. And the leadership in this church, they... They may do something a little bit different, but they are following. Yes. It's the model. Amen. So don't worry about that. Every now and then glance over your shoulder. <laughs> we'll be following. But they are individuals. They're unique. Sometimes they're hard to manage. <laughs> and so as you encourage us, uh, don't be discouraged by us. Are you <laughs> getting my grip today? Leadership. <laughs> oh, yeah, hard to manage. Here's another interesting thing. When a leadership is placed into another flock, they're going to take the lead there as well. Yep. Some of you may be sent to another flock. Yep. Well, you're going to be leadership in that flock. That's okay. Why well, call that discipleship? Yep. Yep. Some leadership pastor have to be sent to other folds, other flocks, sort of like shepherds, are sent from one place to the other. You understand. Yep. Yep. Be patient with us. But they got to be sent. That is leadership. Oh, yeah. Here's another interesting thing. That uh, their bread or their disciples to be placed in these other flocks and be sent there. And they're sent there so that those other folds will not go extinct. Mm. That's the unique thing. Sometimes we're assigned to go to a fold. Sometimes leadership we're sent to another place. It's to help that whole from literally just dying out. Wow. That's where we're at. Been in North Georgia. Blessed to be in North Georgia. And that's the longest I've been anywhere. 17 years of my life has been in this, this region. I can't tell you how many times I've been sent into a fold as the one that has to read the edict or the letter from a bishop saying it's over. Trying to get this group of sheep into another group of sheep. You understand what I'm saying? It's yeah. tough. A tough assignment. And so don't be alarmed by that. But it's to help that them to, to continue to exist through the power of the Holy Spirit. But it's a tough assignment. Pastor, Bishop, you have a tough assignment. To lead us. To guide us. To these green pastors week in and week out. And you do so well. You're gifted. Yes, You're a gifted yes. musician and singer. You have a beautiful family and a yes. godly heritage. And uh, man, what a what a gift. What a treasure you are. Don't take it lightly. But we want you to know this. Yes. You lift you up. And you lift us up through the word and through through just watching you and being a part of your life. So carry up. One day at a time. We can only do it one day at a time. Can't do anything about yesterday. Not sure of tomorrow, but today's a great day. And one step at a time. So lead us, and we will follow. Give us some good food. You're going to feed us, feed us well. And I know he feeds us well. Here's another thing. These, uh, these, these leadership, they reproduce baby leadership. Oh, yeah. Brother Hale, you've got quite a few leadership out there. <laughs> yes, you do. So you have done well. You have multiplied and you have replenished. Yes. And being a leadership at your church, you have sent your very own to other churches that are leadership there. It's the way it works. It's just the way it works. Well, these leadership, uh, usually they do them like one at a time, a regular sheep. Oh, no, these, these leadership, they'll, uh, they'll just take it slow and deliberate. Because they are on a mission, a submission. And these uh, these newborn leadership, they're quicker to get on their feet. They're quick learners. A new convert is always eager to learn and to do. 
Man, that's what's fun. Yeah. Is when you get these baby lambs in here. And you've rescued them. From all that's out there. Some of them. That's the shape I was in. Was in the claw of the enemy. Amen. Some of them. All that was hanging out. Was one limb. And the Bible gave a model. That if there was one limb hanging out. The shepherd would reach in that lion's mouth and grab a hold of an ankle or an arm or an ear, in that case, and bring that out of the snatch of the enemy. Amen. Wow. We were rescued, folks. Amen. We were rescued by a good shepherd. Yes. His name is Jesus. Yes. And by a shepherd that he chose from his heart to lead us. It was a shepherd that would reach in there and grab us out of the snare of the wicked one. What a model, what a blessing. That's the way Amos described it. That's what salvation is all about. I was in an impossible situation when the Lord had visited me. That shepherd, when the blood, I'll never forget hearing that song for the first time, The Blood Will Never Lose Its Power. 1970, I was on a choir trip with some kids I didn't even know. They just said, I was that kid, hey, you want to go on a choir trip? I didn't know the song. Yeah, where are you going? I lived in Cincinnati and wound up in somewhere up in the middle of Michigan. But it was a Friday night youth service. And I heard a song from this contemporary artist, kind of a new guy. His name was Andre Crouch. I never heard anything like that. And he started singing that song about the blood. Wow. First time I heard it, tears streaming down. I had an encounter with the blood of Jesus. Wow. Man, that was powerful. In fact, it still resonates. Thank you for being led to sing that song today. For a boy like me, it served as a reminder that I was in the clutch of the enemy. And he rescued me and it took some bloodshed, but it was his bloodshed that covered my sin. Leadership, they're all about managing the present. Oh yeah, you know we live in the present. But here's the deal. The leadership. The shepherd lives in the present, but he has to lead us to where we're supposed to be going. That's the tough assignment. That's why you were chosen. That's why you, as a couple and as a family, have this unique calling and these unique gifts that he's given you guys as a couple. It's for times like this. So leadership are all about managing the present, but leadership or shepherding is all about taking the flock into the future to where we need to be. Sometimes he has to pick us up, as the model said in Isaiah, and hold us close to his heart or carry us on his shoulders. And if you'll notice lately, your pastors, you see them on television or you run into them at the supermarket, you'll notice a slump in their shoulders. They've been carrying the load. They've had to carry people like me on their shoulders. People like you on their shoulders. But they always carry, bring in close to their hearts. Wow. So it all begins with the heart, circles back around and ends with the heart. Amen. Thank you for your heart. Amen. You have a heart that was given from the heart of God. Amen. Through Jesus Christ. Put that heart, those gifts, those abilities in you. So yes, you've got to carry the load. Carry the load. But we want you to know today you're not going to carry it alone. Right. Leadership are going to rise up. Right. And they're going to help this heavy load out. Yes. They're going to take some of these, wrap them around and keep them close to their heart. And follow the man and the woman of God as they follow the great shepherd. Right. It's a plan. Pretty simple. That's where we're at. I wouldn't be here today. Unless I was led, and unless I was fed by a shepherd. I was one of those teenagers and wayward, and uh, still my mom was tough, Sister Hale. She still, man, lived by the stars and stripes. I saw stars and belt stripes, and the toys got a little more sophisticated, so I didn't get whipped as much. But I was loved. Yeah. Loved. Amen. I'll never forget. I was... Uh, Got tired of everybody telling me what to do. <laughs> so me and my buddy Mark, we decided uh, one day we're just gonna we're gonna skip school today. We're gonna head up to Montgomery Road. That's where all the action was. We're gonna set out to get in trouble. 
been in trouble, we're going to go get some more. We're going to go find us some trouble. We're going to sin. Let's go. And we had it all planned out. Let me show you, show you how much a shepherd loves the sheep. Never forget, we got out that, that morning. It was about 10 o'clock. We slept in. Oh, yeah. We got out there on the side of the road, got our thumbs out. We were hitchhiking up Smith Road to Montgomery Road where all the action was at. We were going to start with a pool hall and work our way down from there. <laughs> well, guess what? As I got my thumb out, buddy, man, he was taller than I was, so we had two thumbs out. We were ready. Around this corner, we pulled a car, pulled up this way, came right over to the curb. Window rolls down. And guess who it was? Pastor. Pastor Isaacs. <laughs> the window rolls down. And there he is. Hey. Where are you boys heading on a Tuesday morning at about 9, 10, 15 in the morning? I was pretty good center, pretty quick on my feet. And I said, uh, we're heading to uh, Norwood High School. He said, hop in. I'll carry you to where you're supposed to be. Got in the front seat. Mark climbed in the back. Now, inside, my guts were like this. I don't know if you've ever been caught in sin. There's this feeling yes. right here. And I thought, well, this is my last day on the planet. Yeah. Because the pastor, he's going to preach to me all the way up to high school. Yeah. Then he's going to call my mom. And I'm going to, she's going to kill me. Yeah. So, And then my dad's going to get home from work. And then my dad's going to kill me again. <laughs> so I'm a dead man. I'm just a dead man. But the heart of a shepherd. Pastor Tim, you have that heart. Did you know the pastor... He never said one word on the way up to high school that morning. He didn't have to. The Holy Spirit was preaching for him. Amen. And I'm telling you, something gripped my soul, my heart, my mind. He never called my mom. He didn't have to. He didn't tell my dad. He didn't have to. He had the heart of a heavenly father. And it was given to him. You see, the shepherd will pick you up, hold you close to his heart, squeeze you, carry you to where you are supposed to be, to the green pastures, and he there will release you to graze the way that we were meant to graze. Are you tracking with me today? That's the work of the shepherd, to pick us up and to take us to where we are supposed to be. So thank God for the model of the shepherd in our lives to bring home the lost sheep. And that was the purpose that God sent him in the first place. And guess what? It's happening right before our very eyes. As missiles and bombs and terrorism fly over that part of the world, it ought to remind us there is a good shepherd. A great shepherd who is in charge and he came for the lost sheep from the house of Israel, folks. That's one of the signs that Jesus is coming to you and give us a good shepherd. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for following that model. So in closing, feed us. Feed us. Lead us and feed us. Oh, it'll get messy. And we'll, some of us eat down the past here. Man, as we on the go. Some of us eat fast. Some are fast learners. And there's some slow learners. <laughs> but the Bible said you'll be patient. And you'll preach with understanding. And you'll understand the flock. And you'll know where we're at. And you'll pick. He will know the voice of the sheep. Amen. He'll know the voice of the sheep. Man, you'll hear us. And we'll be whining, <laughs> winnowing, I don't know what the word is, crying, fussing, complaining, but lead us the way. Lead us the way. And we will follow. Oh, yes. Then yes. some will rise up and become those leader sheep yep. that God is wanting us to be. Where's he going to lead us to in closing? And we're going to pray. When he sticks his head out, the leader sheep. Look out there. And uh, when we leave this sheep gate here in a few minutes, there's the sheep gate. 
We got to go out there. When we leave the sheep gate, we got to beware. Pastor doesn't want us to bring what's out there back in here. What's out there? False doctrine. Yep. Yes. No. False prophets. No. Confusion. Yes. Oh, confusion. All kinds of theology. There's all kinds of things out there. We don't bring what's out there back into the fold. It's right. who we bring back in here. Right. Yes. Instead of bringing that back in here, let's bring in the lost. Yes. Let's bring in those that are confused. Yes. Let's bring in those that are stumbling, Amen. staggering, and you get the lingo there. Let's bring in those that are bound by every wicked thing. Let's bring in them into this fold and let's clean them up. Yes. Oh yeah, through the word and through the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit and send them back out there to recruit others Amen. who were in that same condition. Yes. Man, something stirring on the inside this morning, it's on the way. They're on the way, not it. You don't need philosophies and all that. Well, there's this way. Oh, no, no, no. There's plenty of that out there. We don't need that. We need them. Yes. And they're going to come in here in this fold where they're going to be loved on, where they're going to be taught, and they're going to be preached the love of Jesus through the power of the Holy Ghost. They're going to be fed a daily diet that is going to lift them up and encourage them and fill them with hope. And we're going to send those leaders right back out there and they're bringing others in. The thing that got me the most as I studied this was the words of the Apostle Paul. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28 and 29. Talks about a lot in that whole chapter there. It said five times, this is Paul, one of the greatest leaders of the New Testament church. Five times the Jews, he was a Jew. He was a Jew's Jew, if you will. Five times my very own put stripes on my back. Three times I was beaten with rods. One time I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. One of those nights for a night and a day, I had to tread water. You remember the story, got out of the water, had to hold on to a plank, made it to Malta, stirred and stoked up a fire, and was bit by a snake. Just stirring some things up. And this is him talking. He said, man, I've had hard traveling year in and year out. I've had to ford rivers, fend off robbers. Struggle with friends, struggle with foes. I've been at risk in the city, risk in the country, endangered by desert sun and sea storm. I've been betrayed by those I thought were my brothers. I've known drudgery and hard labor. Many a long and lonely night without sleep. Wow, Pastor, thank you for staying awake at night. Pray for people like me. I would be found. Wandering out there, man, with no flashlight, no light at all. The darkness. Thank you for praying. Preparing a way for me. Thank you for that. Paul saying the same thing. I've known drudgery and hard labor. Many a long and lonely night without sleep. Many a missed meal. Blasted by the cold, naked to the weather. But the thing that gripped my heart is this. This phrase says, says it all. It says, and that's not half of it. That's not enough. That wasn't even half of it. When you throw in the daily pressures and anxieties of all the churches, when someone gets to the end of their rope, I feel a desperation in my bones when someone is duped into sin and angry fire burns in my gut. Man. That's what our pastor feels. When one of us, the sheep from this fold, gets, we're duped into sin. We're enticed. We're carried away by our own lust. CJ, we get duped into sin. Oh, yeah. But a pastor, under the shepherd mom, something wells up within him. Know that that's the work of the Holy Spirit. We'll never squash that. Let it well up in you. And preach the truth. Throw out the lifeline. It's difficult. It's tough. But we're being duped into sin. And nowadays we're being duped every day. 
and it's come into the fold and they're being snatched away. So thank you. Thank you for the fire that you have inside you. Yes. That holy yes. enthusiasm that rises up in you, Pastor Tim. Thank you for loving Amen. us. Amen. And I want to say One of England's leading stage actors back in the late 1800s was a uh, man. He was he was awesome, and he was in this uh, venue. And someone asked him. They blurted out, "Said, hey, actor, can you stand and tell us the shepherd's psalm, Psalms 23?" That actor stood up. The actor, man, enunciation, pronunciation. He had the voice, the timing. He was eloquent, standing ovation. Man, everybody was applauding because he was awesome. Someone in the crowd said, hey, there's a preacher. The local preacher is here. Have him to say the Lord's Prayer, the Psalms 23. That preacher stood up. It wasn't eloquent. It wasn't uh, Announced correctly, it wasn't all he did. Lack. He lacked all that that famous actor had. But a holy hush came over that crowd. And man, there was a few whimpers and some tears streaming down their face. Someone said afterwards, said, Man, that actor, well, he knew the song, but the preacher knew the shepherd. Yes. Oh, yeah. See, we've got a lot of theatrics nowadays where they're appealing to the eyes right. and the ears and they're moving men but preach under the anointing of the Holy Spirit yes, yes, yes. and you'll move our hearts. Yes, right. Thank God for a pastor that knows the shepherd. Amen. Oh yes, the shepherd. Pastor Tim, I want you to join me up here. And uh, Man, I feel you today. You know, stop by. So grateful for the opportunity because I enjoy doing Pastor appreciation it because I do appreciate you. Do love you. And you're young. Full head of hair. <laughs> <laughs> you can play and you can sing yeah, and yeah. your family's growing. Yeah. But we want to encourage you today, the leadership that are here. Family and friends. But we're all sheep. Some are leader sheep. So today we lift you up. We encourage you this day. Thank you for feeding us. Thank you for leading us. Yes. I know this, it gets. I know that the load has to get heavy sometimes. But keep leading. The Lord will give you strength. My yes. Yes. This prayer today is several fold. Of course, we're going to pray for Pastor Tim and, and Allison and their family, little Asher and Sophie. Um, see, the enemy is after their souls. Yep. The enemy would love to get a claw into them <laughs> and to split them apart. Yep. And it's happening. Yes. It's about to happen in my family. Man, call the mission to claw enemy. That fox of all fox, that yep. wolf of all wolf. Oh, yes. And he gets a claw in there, and it's real. Well, that's not going to happen to our pastor. Nope. We're going to lift him up in prayer. Amen. We're going to undergird him. Yes. Like Aaron and her, we're going to get under his shoulder. And we're going to help him. He's standing, we're standing. Oh, yep. yes. Amen. He's strong, we're strong. Yep. Oh, yes. That's the mob. We're going to lift up the man and the woman, the family of God today. Some of you, man, you need to be reintroduced, reintroduced to, the, to the shepherd. Man. You wandered, you went astray. Yes. If you're here this morning, man, you need the blood of Jesus applied to your life. It is available because He is available. Yes. He's here ready to do yes. any miraculous yes. thing. Because I'm telling you, the enemy is real. He gets a call in our minds, but more importantly, our hearts. He yes. can rip your heart out. Oh, I mean, I mean just cast you off. Yep. That's the way he works and using every scheme he can to do you into sin. But there's a shepherd. Yes, there a is. great shepherd that will lift us up. So if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus, the good shepherd, 
you want to be introduced to him, more important, you want to have a relationship with him, you want him to leave, slip your hand up, we're going to pray for you. Man, I've been in that predicament. Yes. And it's real. He's available this morning. Well, we're going to pray. Some of you, some sons and some daughters, used to be in this fold. Now they're gone. Out there wandering in a wilderness without any, any leadership in their life but themselves. Okay, we're going to lift them up today. I've got some family members up in Cincinnati is where I was raised. Man, they need the Lord. They're getting up there in years now. They've been bound by every wicked thing. We're going to pray for family members today. Anybody got somebody we've been praying for? you got a lost sheep out there. The black sheep of the family. He's out there. Every family will pray for him today. Yes. We're going to call their name out and we're going to lift them up to the Good Shepherd. Is that all right? Yes. We're going to pray for the ministries of this church. Yes. That altar is coming open. It's going to get bloody. It's going to be messy because they're bloody and they're messy. They're bleeding. But they're coming into the fold. Yes. Leaving all the junk out there. They're going to be filled up and sent right back out there. And they're going to bring others that were in the same condition that they were in. But they're going to leave in a position in Christ. Is that all right? Amen. It's all the way. I like that. I like that. Yes. Here's what we're going to do. Everyone stand with me today. Let's call upon the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. And you have somebody you've been praying. I got, uh, I got a cousin. His name's Danny. Danny has spent the last 28 of the last 32 years, 28 of them have been in penitentiary. Penitentiary. I got another cousin that's serving a life sentence in Kentucky, a federal penitentiary up there for murder. Got another cousin being out in California in the pen. Just got away from the Lord and got out there and got a call in their life. Those are three ended up praying for them. And God would set them free. Maybe not from behind bars. One of them will never be released. But on the inside, those bars will be dead. Anybody got a son or a brother? Somebody you've been praying for? I want to hear a first. Just give us a first name. We're going to take those names to the Lord. Michael and Larry. Michael yeah. and Larry. Anybody else? Arnold Boyd. My dad is 86. Ryan Smith. Anybody else? These are real people. Yeah. yeah. Real people that you know. That your heart, if your heart hurts for them, how much more his heart you were a shepherd that they come in contact on the jump somewhere, their heart aches. His heart aches for them. They're on the way. Anybody else? Just somebody. Patty and Willie. Wow. Patrick Collins. They're on the way back to the fold. Amen. I don't know where they're at this morning. I don't know what condition they're in. Oh, they get in some conditions. They're on the way. They're on the way to some green pastures. Some calm waters are going to come into the right. See the calmness. They just need a calmness. I know who can lead them to the calm waters. Got to fill them up. Man, there. For I step in to say this morning that I have heard your cries. I have heard your prayers. You lost loved ones I see. You lost loved ones I weep for myself by my Father in heaven. But this morning I tell you my spirit goes out to them. My spirit comes out to them. I'm pulling them in, said God. As we enter into these last days, I'm pulling them in. There will be celebrations in heaven as these lost loved ones come to know the sacrifice of my son, Jesus Christ, who shed his blood for the remission of sins. Just as your sins are in remission, their sins shall be in remission, saith God Almighty this morning in heaven. Jesus, that name that is matchless, that name that is the shepherd of all shepherds who shed his life for us. Today, dear Lord, our sons and our daughters, our nieces and nephews, our husbands and wives, our dads and moms, 
They are lost, dear Lord. They need to return to the fold. They need to have the blood of Jesus applied to their life. They've been duped into sin long enough. They're bound by themselves, imprisoned by themselves, dear Lord. Some of them in jail, some of them running free, so they think. But this day, dear Lord, we call them home. We call them to this fold. We call them to follow a shepherd as he follows Christ. So, Father, thank you for sending us a shepherd model. Thank you for sending us your heart, the son of, of you, dear Lord, Jesus, who died upon a cross for my sins, dear Lord. When I was duped into sin, while I was a sinner, dear Lord, you sent Jesus into my life. So today, dear Lord, we pray over our lost loved ones and our friends, our workmates, our schoolmates, dear Lord, that they would be introduced to you. And we declare that in the name of Jesus. We declare that they're coming home. Cancel assignments that are over them. Can't cancel those things, dear Lord, that are, that are in their path. And show them another way, another direction. And his name is Jesus. <laughs> Point them to Jesus. Carry them to Jesus, Holy Spirit. Lead them, tug on their heart, wherever they're at at this moment, dear Lord. Wherever they're, whatever condition they are, dear Lord. Tug on their heart in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Coming home, who wants to pray? For the man of God and the woman of God. Yes. And I want us to get in a hug, man. It's football. See, I like to hug up.